Okay, Commissioner Hall, the floor is yours. Great. Um, welcome, everybody. I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Sound Public Art Commission to order for Wednesday, March 13th. <clears throat> um, we'll just introduce ourselves real quick. My name is Zach Hall. I'm the chair of the Sound Public Art Commission. I'm Susan Apak. I'm the vice chair. Crystal Lauer, commissioner. And then uh, maybe Keith, do you want to introduce yourself and we can introduce our guests as well? Yes, my name is Keith bond Wynn, and I am the Public Works Liaison to the Salem Public Art Commission. And Takata, artist with the Salem Peace Mosaic. Uh, David Muller, uh, Salem IT Department. Uh, Brian Hart, uh, Salem resident. Perfect, yes. Uh, Carly Wright, uh, also a Salem resident. Yeah. Rosa, Rosa Leonardi, Salem resident. Welcome. Tori Banford, I'm with Urban Development. Thank you for joining us. Um, okay, so we're going to go straight into uh, public comment. Keith, I see uh, that you've listed out uh, three different uh, speakers today. Is there anything else other than those on the agenda, or should we jump right into them? Uh, I'd like to um, welcome Spencer Emmer, Commissioner. He just uh, joined the meeting. And I believe it's um, John Christian. John Christian said, Welcome. Um, have a seat. How are you, Keith? Doing well, thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> it's been a while. I love to see the diversity. <laughs> um, yes, we do have. I'm not either. Yeah, yeah we're all laying us up. Yeah. Mm. Be careful, I might talk. <laughs> uh, we we'll be at the big boy table today. <laughs> And I believe we have um, three um, speakers today, uh, actually four for public comment. Um, Carol Snyder, the per, uh, she couldn't yes. make it, but she told me to pass along uh, uh, some good news. So we'll first start off with Rosa. Great. Thank you, Rosa. So uh, I had the urge to write the city council <clears throat> every morning. I turn right onto Front Street from Market. And all of those buildings down there, but the one that's right there has recently been painted. And that was the one that spurred my thinking about murals. So that was what I wrote to the city council about. I received the Salem Reporter newsletter yesterday and found out that Northgate neighborhood is doing a mural, a neighborhood mural. They received a grant. They're going to include neighbors and children. So, you know, there's so much empty space along Front Street and those buildings. So I had to write. Great. Uh, well, thank you for doing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Northgate grant. Is that something that's happening? Hi, Susan. You want to get That's That's the uh, the fence at the park. Ah, the fence. They've already, they've already mm -hmm. painted it, and now they've actually, I just looked it up because it was in the, thank you for saying that, Rosa, it was in the, um, the neighborhood news. They received the SPIF grant now, po pro post- I guess, you know, they've already done the mural, but they need to receive the spiff oh. grant. I guess do more is what I'm understanding because they're having a meeting where they're going to get people involved um, to figure out what to paint more, I assume, because we know part of it's already painted. And that's been a discussion, Rosa, in our group because it doesn't really fall under the commission and we were questioning where does it fall? So there's no provision that we know of for painting, and maybe Keith can clarify this, for painting murals without going through the commission uh, for approval. So um, there seems to be a, a not something else going on that we're not involved in. And as far as having more murals in town, it's exactly what we're trying to do. 
We're trying to make it a lot easier for people to apply to do murals. It's it was one of our goals for the year is more <clears throat> murals in Salem. So it's great to know that there's support out there. Thank you. And thank you for being so passionate about it that you actually wrote a letter to the council. That helps us too. Thank you. Yes, Com uh, Commissioner Napak, the, com the discussion around um, the fence being a mural um, can also fall under another agenda item. Um, um, Councilor Nishioka's uh, motion to review um, the code for temporary art. Uh, currently under city code, a fence painting is not con cannot be considered a substrate for a mural as part of the mural program. Um, currently, it's technically a sign under sign code as it captures attention from the, the right of way and roadway. Um, but because we don't have it defined and pulled out of, of code similar to um, asphalt art or the street art, um, it's technically a sign. So it would have to be an action of the commission to say fence painting in public parks on private fences is technically a mural. Or could be considered a public mural, um, but then that would get in the easement um, to the city and whatnot. Which my understanding is that fence was in just an agreement between the property owner um, and the artist, not necessarily the city. Um, so that's kind of the details and nuances we need to explore um, once we get into this. I hope that helps for now. Are those, um, I guess, are those buildings that you're you've been noticing, Rosa? Are those? Privately owned buildings or are they city buildings? No, they're privately owned. So yeah, I think following on Susan's comment, if if there's a way to reach out to those property owners and encourage them to consider, you know, the mural program, uh, we have been working to make that more accessible. So okay, um, put the, I'll put that bug back in your in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but thank you for your for your passion. Um, Keith, we have, is it is Brian up next? Yes, um, Mr. Hart um, would like to talk about some tagging in Bush Park or recent. Yeah, so thank you for letting me come here and speak. Uh, kind of the same thing happened to me. I emailed uh, Councillor Nishioka, who's my counselor for my area. I live in South Salem in the SCAN district. Um, I'm actually on the board of the SCAN Neighborhood Association, so it's John. I'm not here representing SCAN Neighborhood Association, though, just as a citizen because we've been talking about these problems that keep coming up and what, what can I do? What can, you know, what can the public do to, to help alleviate this problem or to help try to stop it? Now, there's been other things now that have happened in Bush Park that are probably a little more serious. Um, and so that I don't want to take away from the importance of that either. But, uh, you know, I know that murals are that have to have a real formal process to happen, and this is also a city park, and I don't know if that even has more regulations. I know that murals on on things a lot of the time uh, deter more graffiti, uh, but if a mural is not in the option, you know, is there something we can do? I know what is the best, most attractive thing to people that have graffiti. It's a gray blank cam canvas. You know, can we can we stripe it? Is that not a mural, but maybe if it's striped because you can't see the tag as often if it's different colors, you know? And I'm just trying to, again, kind of raise awareness of this problem that we're having there quite often these days. And if there's something that can be done either through SPAC or the city to help stop this from happening. And I would love to be a part of the solution or at least help brainstorm or whatever I can do. <laughs> And are you you're specifically talking about the, the bathroom complex there kind of on the south that's end? That's kind of like the first thing that came to mind and that's been hit a lot. I mean, they've been expanding their tagging to statues and even fences, and I think they're doing bushes and they're just they're it's getting out of control over there. Um, but if we can give them some less targets, you know, I think that's might be a good start. Yeah, Keith, do you know if there's is there an opportunity to speak with Parks and Rec about, you know, whether um, so two things. Yes, two things I hear. One is the building is most likely owned by the city of Salem, so we would have our facilities responsible for the paint jobs and whatnot. So my first step would see, you know, is our designs allowed, you know, within city code, and if not, um, 
you know, how do we get a design on it? The other option is SPIF, the, it's, a, it's a parks um, grant, mm -hmm. and that's the same grant um, that the Northgate neighborhood used to build, to do the fence. Right. So that could be a community organized um, grant um, through, through the parks process, and I think it's every two years. But basically, maybe, maybe perhaps a conversation with our operations manager on what can be painted. Um, what do you think, Zach? Could, is that something that SPAC would like to endorse or um, support? I I think we've you know we've talked about it for a while about the idea of expanding you know sort of smaller art and mural projects into parks. So I think it fits within the kind of things we've been talking about for the last year. Um, so I, I for sure think we should explore it and see, you know, it obviously, as Brian mentioned, there's been a lot of, um, there's been some recent, you know, sad activity right there. So there might be an appetite now to try and address that facility and, and see what, you know, could be done from an art perspective or from a design perspective to discourage, you know, criminal activity, tagging and, and anything else that might go along with it. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's something we should look into. That's my opinion. Anyone else, any other commissioner have a thought on that? Well, it could fall under the community, um, you know, art initiative that Linda Nishioka is kind of pushing toward the, something out of, outside of the realm of our traditional mural program. So possibly if the neighborhood, whether through the Neighborhood Association or not, wanted to propose something, uh, it could get things rolling because then it would come before somebody or us or whatever and say, hey, do we, you know, what's the story with these community um, mural initiatives? And it, it could get things rolling. So I think that would be a great idea. The other thing I just, I mean, in the meantime, we've had a lot of tagging in our, you know, where I live and people are, the, the city is very good about coming out to to clean it up, by the way. They seem to be you know, when they have enough staff, but we have, I have a fence in my backyard and it's painted black. And not that there's been a lot of tagging on our alley um, in general, but it might be a deterrent. I mean, black isn't always, I find it very elegant, but you know, maybe just paint the, the building right now in a dark color, you know, so, you know, so it's harder for them to get bright color spray paint. I don't know, just an idea. Uh, John, have something you want to say? Hi, is is Rosa on the commission? Uh, Rosa's a guest. Oh, she's a guest. Hi, Rosa. Hi. <laughs> Who is that? John Christensen. I haven't seen you in a long time. The cafe. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hmm. Um, John Christensen, for the record, I'm actually chair of the SCAN Parks, Historic Preservation Parks and Gardens Committee, and I have been for the last 12, 13 years. And I've followed the tagging that you're talking about. We have tagging in our neighborhood. It was two guys from California who went through and tagged all the way down South Commercial um, and then left town, of course. Uh, but I, I wanted to, to kind of say from my experience that because it's Bush Pas Bush's Bastard Park, and it is on the National Register of Historic Places and within a National Historic District, we are very careful to the colors. And when we did the rehab of what was called the Crooked House Playground in Bush's Pasture Park, I remember consulting, conferring with Nancy Lindbergh. And some of you may know Nancy, but Nancy headed the 1% for Art program in the state of Oregon for 20, 30 years, and as a local artist and has had her work shown at the Salem, the Bush Barn. She said that when we're doing that rehab of the Crooked House Playground, we looked at a, a floor for it. And I, I share this with you because I went to her and I said, Nancy, what color do we use? And sometimes you think, oh, it's a playground. You, use rainbow colors or something like that. And she said, no, in that park you use earth colors. And she was right. And I just wanted to share that, that in some contexts, some settings, 
you have to be color you have to be careful with your colors mm -hmm. sure yeah thank you thank you for letting me share that yeah of course so it sounds like path forward you know Brian, maybe you and Scan want to look at applying for a SPIF grant and maybe writing a, a note to um, uh, Linda Nishioka to sort of express your interest in this project, given that she's supporting it. And then on our end, we can meet with facilities and um, maybe parts and see what what's even possible um, there and what limitations there might be, to your point. Uh, Tom, I forget your name right. Um, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, does that sound sound plausible to you, Keith? The path forward. Yes, absolutely. I like that um, plan of um, plan forward. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Brian and John. John, sorry, Tom. Um, so Keith, you said we had four. I have. Um, Lynn next, is that is that right? Yes, uh, we have Lynn next. Um, and one second, I am trying to. Um, so I don't know if um, the best way for me to ask to have the slides advanced because I was going to go through them very quickly. Can I do that? Maybe yeah, soon? you can do it. Um, let me find a way for me to share this. <laughs> Zoom. So okay. just an introduction. Um, I had some technical snafus, so I took an old presentation and added to it. I wasn't able to update all of the slides, but I'm going to go through things. Pretty quickly, do you know? Uh, I think it's just a uh, arrow. The arrow. Okay. So it's already on a timer. We just involved 600 people in doing the mosaic and um, lots of children. I guess I were involved. We worked um, at about 12 different locations for this, um, involving professional artists, everyone coming to the Salem Art Association, making these little tiles. At the Chamawa Indian School, we were invited to come, and so we engaged about 80 people from the tribes at that event. Um, Paul and Peterson wrote a poem that says, um, Salem, we're speaking peace each time we say your name, specifically for the mosaic. And um, the mosaic is about, was about 60 feet long. It wrapped around the corner, we started the engagement process in 2010, and we spent like two years doing outreach, um, trying to ask people, what does peace mean? And um, so we had a Native American um, um, board member that did what he called fishing for words. He said, what is the one word that means peace to you? So this project means so much to so many people because they pour their hearts into it. And many of these people have now since passed away. So we have students at Parish working um, on designs for the mosaic. You can see we took some of their designs and incorporated them. Those students are now in their 20s probably. Yeah. And um, the we were just treated so kindly. We work with students at Chamoa and then we invited them to come downtown to help us. And that's our was our strategy. We went to where people were and then we invited them in. North Salem High School played a significant role in the redesign of the mosaic. And we listened to those students. Um, they really cared about peace. Uh, they had messages that were written it sculpted into the, the work um, out of the hundred words or so that we received from the public, then we got a process where we engaged people to say, what words resonate with you about peace? We had synchronicity, imagine, a lot of uh, different um, activities. So, uh, the YMCA was a, a location that we engaged probably 100 people. There were wonderful things that happened at the Mosaic that people treasure. You know, there's those moments in your life that you remember. 
and they're really significant to um, we had just such a diverse group of people coming together, um, working outside, and then people came back because they really cared about what they had made. So very strong connections with the wall. Um, and it, we were outside for six months. Uh, so a lot of people witnessed it. And even though they didn't participate in it, they cared about it. So there were some efforts to keep part of the mosaic, but the Y had a different, you know, vision for uh, their design. And so, but they were supportive in the process of uh, renovating at Hillcrest uh, Youth did a huge part of the mosaic, um, significant to them. So I think I, let's see. So that was done by uh, some of the tribe members at the um, Tomahawk Indian School. And I, I guess the last, so we were able to get um, the carousel to give us a place for the mosaic. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, we've been waiting for four years for the carousel to raise funds for this and they have not yet started a significant fundraising effort, um, they need to raise over 3 million and we're, our board is looking for another site. And we have a letter from them um, acknowledging that whatever our board decides, they're fine with, you know, whatever. From the carousel group? From the carousel, I have it in, in writing. So the plan was cut the mosaic in sections. We couldn't find an engineer in town that wanted to touch it because it was, Kind of scary. You've got a hundred year old historic masonry building with no reinforcement, and how are we going to save it? Um, this was um, the carousel design expanded the mosaic to wrap it around the building. We were super excited about it, still super excited about it. But anyway, the destruction began. We were all holding our breaths. We were there every single day. So they started to destroy the back of the building first. Uh, the mosaic was cut into sections by a phenomenal uh, group benchmark. They were amazing. And um, then I had to, um, I know people wanted to see the mosaic, even if we uncreated it, the clay would still be there because we were protecting the artwork from undercuts because spray foam was put in there. So if spray foam wrapped around that, then when it was removed, it would break the artwork. So the artwork was covered with plastic, then with, uh, there were holes drilled through it, bolts built, drilled through the whole wall to enable lifting of the artwork. Um, placement of the holes were very carefully done, then uh, foam was injected to fill the crates that were made to uh, protect it. We had a, a, the, the most uh, renowned engineer in moving artwork come here from Amsterdam and he also consulted with us. So he was just happened to be doing a presentation at Willamette. So we were very lucky. So um, after the crates were built, they had these um, angular pieces and we were just all holding our breasts because, you know, the bricks were just falling down. Um, then the upper part was our genius engineer who brought, who came here from Colorado, had this specialty saw, and we were able to save the dove, which was cast glass done at Hillcrest. Um, and it was kind of amazing because the brick was in layers and they were, they had a, he even brought the saw with him. So the big pieces from the brick were taken out. And then um, it was just a phenomenal process. After the, um, it was created, the, uh, the artwork was lifted onto crates and then we went to uncrate it. This is all the tiles we lost, that little bucket. And this is what the mosaic looked like um, after we uncovered it. Nothing was lost. Uh, their holes were strategic, strategically drilled. There will need to be some repair because they couldn't always drill the holes in you know, a place where there was. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't drill them through any significant artwork. So we were just um, like overjoyed because that was us after um, because we um, we just didn't even imagine that, um, you know, after all of that work, that 
the mosaic was in really good shape. So thank you. Thank you. Try to go through that kind of quickly. Would you like me to show you the photos from the storage? Uh, you can, yeah, I didn't put that in. You can show yep. the commissioners. I know you guys wanted this, to go down and look at it. you just recently gotten? Uh, did you? Oh, you yes, um, Mark Bechtel. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. yeah so Great. So I have that in my uh, folder. Yeah, I took the pictures and sent them to Keith because I had gone down with the intention of replacing the tarps, but the public works already had replaced them. I know the commissioners were interested in seeing the site, but there was nothing to look at. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's what it's good. like, let's go look at the mosaic wall. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Public Works has kindly been storing it for us. Thank you for that. I didn't include those. Thank you but that's saying. where it is right yep. now. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know. We're um, we're looking at a number of options, and Councilor Nishio is aware of those. I don't know if you want to speak to the Civic Center, if you want me to. Um, oh, I'll just one... speak briefly, and then. Sure. Um, so Lynn and I met, and in, in the discussion of um, there's revamping of the civic center. So we're making it earthquake sound or, or improved. And um, I felt that this was a great opportunity to change Peace Plaza into maybe a welcoming park and something that people would want to come to. And in the process, I'm on the committee for the the pre-design committee for Civic Center. And I kept asking if we could make sure that as the pathway from riverfront underneath uh, commercial um, along uh, Pringle Creek there could then continue to move through the uh, Mere Pond and then up, like encouraging people to take a whole stroll all the way up to Peace Plaza and have that certainly far more green and friendly. And so um, Lynn and I talked and I and and she was um, unsure when the carousel might be able to come through. And so I was telling her that I was working uh, in hopes to get a Bloomberg grant um, to help it at Peace Plaza. And um, so it's kind of like two things happening at once. And so we got rather excited about the possibility of Peace Mosaic being at Peace Plaza. Now, where we're unsure, and I don't have enough knowledge, um, Lynn certainly does, and, and many others would too, is how we would incorporate that in Peace Plaza. Is there enough space without, um, there's some artwork outside already there, but unless we, unless something was created specifically, a wall was created specifically for it, we don't know. So I think Lynn will probably talk about other possibilities. But I have spoken with um, Scott Archer, um, Keith, and Mark Bechtel, um, and then this Keith, so the two Keiths. And um, and everyone seems to be very on board with trying to make it work. And we're ahead of the game in the sense that the, the design work for the building and Peace Plaza, especially Peace Plaza, hasn't really begun. So we're ahead of the game instead of trying to make it happen after the fact. And, um, and then without Lynn, just because I needed to make sure that I had support from the city, um, Keith, Keith, and Scott, and Mark, and I met, and I was talking, I know I was telling them that this would be an opportunity for us, and so I was trying to lay the groundwork. We need to make sure that we reach out to Peace Plaza's foundation, um, you know, like, are you okay with this, or bring them on board, and, um, and then also wanted to um, make sure that the carousel was okay to release it. So there were some steps but um, Scott was going to work on that. And then I know that Lynn is working on all the other factors and potentially finding other locations. That's the last I heard. So we, we do have some. Thank you so much, Linda, for the update. I did want to share that we have two board members from Save the Sale and Peace Mosaic for a nonprofit, both John, <laughs> John Mandrill, and John Christensen are here. And I know you both. So that's so good. Good to see you, John. <laughs> um, it's been a long time. It's been so, 
I did learn a little bit more. I know I ran into a team that's bidding. Um, there's an RFP the city sent out. Yes, I and, yes, and I haven't heard yet. And the deadline was last week, possibly. March 7th, I think. Or maybe, yeah, anyway. Um, but the one of the contractors uh, disclosed that that whole slope and the grade from Liberty going to Peace Plaza, that part of the RFP asked them to remove that. Mm -hmm. So that the Peace Plaza would be visible from Liberty. So that, you That's, have, that we talked a lot in our redesign yeah. about trying to make people know, be, make people aware of not only Peace Plaza, but Civic Center. You know, because a lot of times you drive right by it. Where is it? Where is it? It's just this driveway that you go into. So, so it was also suggested the uh, um, underpass um, um, will find what will be the Kringle Creek mm -hmm. pathway. Um, in terms of the board's uh, goals, we want a place that's light, that's yes. in a pedestrian-friendly place with lots. Of, that's where the mosaic was. It's a very interactive piece. The children will come and talk to it, say hello. They kiss the animals and so mm -hmm. on. So we would like that traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so that underpass, I took someone with me uh, I wouldn't have gone by myself. It's a hot mess underneath there right yeah, now. It's pretty yeah. dangerous. No, I, I don't I was <laughs> <laughs> well, So anyway, um, other locations the board has looked at is the entrance to the library. That wall is the perfect size. Uh, does it have challenges? Yes. But it has all the diversity that the Y has, the children, the families. Um, the other location that we were keeping our fingers crossed about was the Statesman Journal building, because there was a proposal to turn that building into a social service center. And, uh, you know, there's, um, and the Y would be involved in with some other organizations and purchasing it. I'm pretty it. sure the state gave money for that. So I think that I, might happen. I was, Deb Patterson was sponsoring that. I was told by her assistant, Cindy, that it failed, oh, okay. that it did not go out of committee, but they are going to try again. It was in the legis in the short session, but they might. So it was to repurpose that building, which is, and when I talked to the wives, they said it would be like coming home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was so good. They were supportive. So we don't know what the future for the mosaic holds, but we wanted to at least introduce back to where we're at right now. There's too many moving pieces. We have no control over any of them. But um, I don't know if you want to add anything. Oh, I just, you, you talked about accessibility and, and uh, the interactive qualities of it. It's such an inclusive project uh, from all of the communities that were involved that it's, um, you want to try to keep that spirit. Uh, and the peak with the uh, the peace plaza, um, some of the uh, adaptations or alterations to the walls, not only that that be a, a improve the security of that area, which has got kind of a, a lot of ambush points if it's dark, but it would be a great, you know, visibly it'd be great for the uh, the mosaic. But um, I hadn't thought about that. I'm new to I'm new to the board, so this is my first meeting here for support. Very new. And uh, I really appreciate being part of it. Um, the heavy lifting. A few questions. Done already. <laughs> yeah, Susan. Um, so I know that uh, maybe I'll just say the the questions and then you can answer them all um, at once. So I know that you received um, a substantial amount to be able to from from I guess it was from the state. I, I guess uh, Peter Courtney helped out with that, getting money so that you could relocate. Uh, if I'm correct, if you, you so you could relocate it and take it out and everything. Um, is there money left over now for reinstalling it somewhere? That's my first question. Do you have funds to do this? My second question is, are you interested in having Salem um, say that the piece mosaic is part of the public art collection? And the third question is, what can we do as a commission to help. Thank you. So the Peace Mosaic is uh, a public, you know, part of the public art uh, collection. So that was, we were one of the first um, 
pieces of public artwork that were incorporated. And at that time, the city worked to kind of have a whole new contract and structure for incorporating pieces into the collection with the little easement process, uh, which the Y did sign. Um, we do have money uh, that we receive both from the city of Salem and from the state, and then we have money that we've raised. So we need, um, it's an historic uh, masonry wall. When we have a site, we will have our engineer uh, who's internationally known. He, his firm did work for Angkor Wat, if you know that site, United Nations building, he, they're renowned. And they do very like amazing work. So then they're the reason we could save it because they were so smart. Um, we need to, the plans with the mosaic are to cut the wall, it's 14 inches thick, and that will be determined by whatever site would accept it, you know. Um, putting in stainless steel rebar to reinforce it because at that point, no rebar was used. So we have money, but we will have to raise additional money to, um, to be able to put in the reinforcement. So we don't have uh, any money right now for installation, but once we have a site, then we can start working, fundraising. Um, we have some potential donors um, that are very wealthy that I would keep my fingers crossed that they might help us be like an angel, one of those angel donors. But we're kind of in limbo until we get that. And then what was your last question? I forgot. I'll have, how can you help? Um, right now, I'm not aware of anything specific that SPAC can do. Uh, but I felt because it is in the public art collection, I wanted to make the commission aware of where we're at in a big period of transition. I guess if we get um, affirmation that uh, one of the sites is possible. We could move forward. We're looking at talking with the lab or the library advisory board and seeing what that might look like. But that's, I think when our board did a little field trip, that was everybody's first choice. Mm -hmm. And I think with the, um, you know, the work that's going to be done at the Civic Center, there is that half percent that goes for public art that could be considered to be used if it were installed at that site. That would be wonderful. Our engineer, um, he's probably billing us for a quarter of his time. It's kind of weird like that project for him, so we're incredibly lucky. So yeah, no, thank you. Um, this is near and dear to so many people that really care about it, all the children, and we just engage people that are marginalized that never get to be included in these types of projects. And the only reason we could save it is because there was, a, when we tried to save it, there was such an outpouring from the community of, yes, this has to be saved. And um, I remember Councillor Lewis stood up in the um, council meeting and said, I, I have an amendment to make. And I saw the city councilors hold their breath because um, <laughs> three councilors were proposing to give us some money. And he said, I don't think they're, we're giving them enough money. <laughs> and I asked him how what his connection was. And he said he walked by it you know, every day. And he saw all the people that were involved. And that made an impact. So thank you for any help that you might give us in the future. Thanks, Lynn. It's a it's a great project. Yeah, thank you for giving us that history. That's great. I look forward to hearing about more about it as that the Civic Center plans mature, or maybe one of your other sites comes along with some more information. So that's exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, Keith, you said we had a fourth. I uh, uh, yes, um, it was last minute. It was um, um, Carol Snyder, uh, President of the Parks Foundation. Um, we got good news that SB, I think it was 5701, Senate Bill 5701, that had a set of, I believe, 16 um, historical, cultural, artistic projects in Oregon got passed. Um, mm -hmm. And on that list was $150,000 grant for the Eco Earth Globe. 
Um, so we're closer to that. Um, with the city's, I think, $112,000 um, transportation occupancy tax um, commitment to that, um, the Parks Foundation only has about $55,000 to raise um, to make their, uh, to hit their goal of about $350,000. Um, I think that the last price tag was about four hundred thousand dollars to uh, repair and six hundred thousand to get rid of. So I think we're 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 close. Um, yeah. I think SPAC could offer um, at um, our social media um, ability to amplify some messages that the parks board might be doing during their fundraising. Um, so that's my only suggestions for. Integration. That's a great idea. Uh, what do you have a schedule of those, or or know kind of what those communications are going to be, or when they're going to come out? I think um when I think uh, Carol would like to come to the next meeting and can discuss more about um, their plans for their um, fundraising efforts after this. I think she believes that there's going to be a bolster, be a bolster to their. Um, Effort after the news uh, because the governor still has to sign it or it still has to pass the budget appropriations part of part of it. Got it. Chris, I assume we could fold that into our social media stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Well, even just hearing from Lynn and hearing about this project and these updates, um, they're both mosaics. I was planning for mural month in May, but May could be mosaic month instead. Um, and I think that would be really fun to focus on both of these projects. They're both really community based and based on volunteers and also need the community and funding to sustain them and help to restore them. Um, so I think doing really um, focused posts on both of those projects could be really wonderful during that whole month. And, and I appreciate that we get to keep the alliteration intact as well. I mean, I love I, I love a good alliteration moment. So, <laughs> but I think too, if Carol was able to come to the next meeting um, and provide some more updates, then I can really have all the information. Um, and Lynn, perhaps you and I can be in touch as well, just so I make sure I have all the updated information about the peace mural, uh, peace mosaic as well, um, and and build some really lovely content for it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, that's all for public comment. I didn't receive anything else um, online. Okay. Thanks everybody for your um, for updating us and bringing your issues to us today. Uh, interesting and hopefully we can um, support your efforts on these different things. So, um, so our next agenda item is approving the uh, consent agenda for the March 13th meeting um, and the minutes for the January 10th meeting. Um, so I'm going to move to, to do that. Uh, is there a second? Um, I just have one comment before we yeah. do that. Yeah. Sorry, Keith. I didn't have a chance to look at this until now. Um, I know it was January, which wasn't that far away, but I don't remember that I was the one that called the meeting to order. Was it, wasn't it that Zach needed to leave early? So I closed the meeting, but didn't he bring it to order? Um, I will have to check that. Um, we, I thought you brought it to order. Uh, yeah, I think that was, I think that was the meeting Zach missed. Yeah. Missed the meet, complete meeting? Okay. So yeah, because this was in person. This was in person over here. Yeah, I, I didn't make that one, so. Okay, never mind. I skipped back to two meetings. Oh, yeah, yeah, there were two meetings ago where Zach had to leave early and you, um, you, you adjourned the meeting on that one. Okay, but the last meeting, that's right. It was you and I in the in the conference room. I right. it's all coming back to me now. Thank you. No, no worries. <laughs> so um Susan, do you want to second that motion to approve? sure. I will second the motion to <laughs> approve the consent agenda and the minutes from the last meeting that I was the chair. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> um, discussion items, uh, updates. So first we have a Keith, an update on the downtown utility box wraps. Um, yes. Um, there were plans to have the box wrapped by now, but because of inclement weather, uh, it was pushed off um, to the middle of March. Good timing. Looks like we have a week of solidly sunny weather coming up. 
Yes. Uh, let me show you what they're going to do uh, for the wrap. You see? Where is this wrap going? Uh, so this wrap is, yep. is going to be installed. I don't know the specific one, but it's going to be in the downtown area. Okay. Um, and the Salem Art Commit Public Art Commission's QR code is going to be displayed right there um, on it. So it'll take us, take people, visitors right to their website, to the website. I better check it now. Well, I don't know if I can you see it. <laughs> <laughs> Will it work? So front and back is sort yeah, of- Yeah, it is, yeah. okay, perfect. So yeah, that's gonna be on all of the, I think there's a dozen of these boxes. Um, so they, they're gonna use this one as a test run um, for the process and procedure and all of that. And um, downtown, we might have a set of birds, a set of, um, they, they did it by streets. Uh, I, I can get more information later on about the, which specific pieces they chose. But um, each one's different. Each one is different. Yeah, they're gonna be different. I think blocks. They, they have a, like birds on one block. The next block will be like trees and landscaping, and then city people. And but so, is oh, that yeah. um, so? It, the that image would be so effectively reproduced twice, right? So there'd be like the body of the bird and the wing on the side, and then the body of the bird again and the wing again. So is that how I'm understanding that front and back and sides? Yeah, that's what it's looking like right here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And the um, sorry, the um, the bottom C is the only one that says City of Salem Public Art. Um, are they planning to put anything anywhere that says that this is part of the Salem? Public art collection and where and also where it is where they can see the original. Oh, yeah, I guess those are a credit of what this is. Yeah, uh, I see the pink here. What does that say? I can't see it. On it's the same public art. Oh, God, that's really, really hard to read. I'm not sure how large it's going to be. Well, it's 64 inches high. Yeah. <laughs> That's as tall as me. Yeah. Public art, but it doesn't say that it really belong. You know that it's yeah, part of the public is. art, our public art collection, and that you can see the real thing somewhere. You know. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm wondering whether they can actually have that because it's yes the the artist I guess they're thinking the artist should be the star, but you know I would also sure. think the fact that they that that residents of Salem, you know, this is their art. So mm -hmm. that, that's important to, um, you know, and that they should be, um, you know, compelled to go and see the full work of art. And also to say that this is just a detail. Yes. Yeah. So, um, hey, uh, oh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I will tell you that the displays that are putting these vinyl wraps on things that um, I, I would suggest not having too many words. People tend to not read. But if the QR code takes you to the site and they can gather all that information at the website, then they would be able to actually keep that and, and on their phone and know that they could go and see the original somewhere. I think if it's just written down um, on the piece, it might not be as appreciated there, you know what I mean? You, they'd have to, again, probably take a picture of it, which they could do just to remember. So that that's a follow-up question that I have. So is it currently going to just go to our basic Salem Public Art website? Because currently we only have a very limited amount of artworks that are actually visible on there. Um, and it's not based in some sort of kind of, it's, it's kind of like done in the virtual scavenger hunt mode of where these pieces are located. So I'm curious how that will actually function on the website. Yeah, and that's a big question. I needed to provide to them a QR code so that it lands them somewhere. Um, okay. so, that, 
So that page will be will serve as our base. So if we want to have a link to the the entire collection, um, then we can have it there because right now it's I linked mean, to the front page that has links to the virtual site. Yeah, would it would it be possible to somehow build a sub page that would just have whatever the featured artworks are for um, this program? So then that way we don't have to have the whole collection available online because as we mentioned, we don't really have um, totally accurate data on all of that at the moment. That's something we're going to work towards this year. Um, but that way we can at least have the, just the featured artworks available in one space so people can then easily access all of them. Yeah, I think I have to put, we need to put more thought into it. Um, I guess my only, my, my only question is sort of, is the, is the overall purpose to have uh, uh, images for people to see? sort of as an act of public art or or is the are we also trying to encourage people to be aware that there is a sound public art collection and that there's more art available and if so like how do we draw that i don't know what the click-through rates are on qr codes i'm going to assume it's low so maybe that's a piece of data we could capture um so i so i i understand i i understand i don't i agree with not wanting to cloud crowd the image with text um but I'm also interested in like just making sure we've thought through, you know, is this, there's a lot more public art that can be seen. We, we're trying to drive enthusiasm for public art, um, not just experientially, like I saw it and liked it, but also sort of becoming aware of, of that there's more of it and sort of building support for the public art collection. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe we could have just a tiny bit more discussion, not, not necessarily right now. I don't know if it's all the stakeholders in the room, but. Sort of how do how are we thinking about ways of driving awareness that these uh, wrapped, you know, utility things are sort of symbolic of and representing the Salem Public Art Collection, of which there is a lot more. Dot dot dot. You know, mm -hmm. um, and maybe we're almost there with that pink text, which again I can't quite say Salem Public Art. Is that right? Yeah, it's the Salem Public Art. Maybe there's some way of just the word collection. You know, might be maybe there's some way of rethinking that a little bit more, just to kind of make, make that line, that dotted line, a little clearer for, for people. I don't know. Those are, those are my only thoughts. But generally speaking, I, it's great. Like I'm excited that these are this is happening. Well, they're they're going to be wrapping them right soon. So I think I don't know how much longer we can kind of put off a discussion. I think we might, if we're going to have a recommendation, we probably have to do it soon. Um, but also just as an artist, um, you know, you see the name of the artist and you see the image, but this image, from what I remember, or understand, it's just a very small part of the artwork. Is that true? I mean, or is, is it just one big painting of a bird? I don't think so. So as an artist, I would want the people viewing this, if they wanted to look further into it, to see right away what the larger artwork is, because um, that's more indicative of the kind of art that, I mean, you know, I don't know how the art, this artist would feel about having their artwork blown up this big. I think we had talked about that too, but it's, it looks beautiful, it, it's nice. It's just not, um, you say the art of, of Robert, how you say his name, and that might not really be symbolic of what his art is like. It Susan, I just looked it up because I have the um I have the full um collection on my computer. It essentially is the full image. It's just been cropped slightly from the top and bottom, okay. but not very much and from I the side. Withdraw my statement about that, but I still think no. But it but it is still. I mean, they they did mention that though when we initially talked to them of there were potential options that would be more detail shots. So that absolutely is still worth. Yeah. So knowing then, exactly what images are being chosen and how those are being chosen to be displayed. So I would almost say if it is a detail that the barcode, the QR code should take you to see the full artwork. Um, or maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if there is a way that all of them could just be on one page that you could be able to yeah. see them all and see the full artwork mm -hmm. and where the location is, I think that could be really, really wonderful. And Keith, I don't know if, that's something I would be able to help assist with with the city or or if that would be something that your IT team would do um, separately. But 
Um, yeah. Well, I mean, just I, I think we need to decide um, if we want to highlight specifically this collection at this QR code, or if this QR code is going to be put on all of our brochures, all of our communications, so we have one like landing page, and whether that landing page can then direct you know with an additional click to the you know utility box artwork. Um, but yeah, do we, so we have a, do we currently have a public art QR code at all in use? Yeah, this is the one yeah. that we've been putting on the brochures. Okay. Yeah, okay. and it takes you right to the, the front page. So people who are interested in public art, um, they'll be able to see like, oh, apply for a mural here. So it's going to be like the Is, menu. Is there a way of doing a, an embedded little you know, link to a thumbnail gallery of the all the wrapped objects. That's what I would have on that landing page. So how long would that process take with the IT team? To create a separate page? Yeah. I don't think a, a, a separate page shouldn't take too long. Um, okay. Creating the QR code wouldn't take too long either. Because would it this be, is already on the proof. <laughs> would it be a, yeah, that's that's kind of the <laughs> the issue is so if it's already approved, then would you need to then embed it in that website? And that that's I guess that's more my question is if we're attaching it to the existing website, what is that? Yeah. So for instance, what I would suggest in this instance would create a separate web page that says utility box wraps downtown. And then we'll load all of the 12 or 14 wraps on there, the artwork, complete artwork um, with the authors. That will be placed onto this QR code. So on the page, it'll be a link on that page. Um, and then, so if you have another, say the brochures that we have, you know, say the, say the piece mosaic, um, we can put it on there, but it'll take us to the home page. But then you would click on another link that says save the piece mosaic. So it's kind of like a hub for everything. Um, and that's kind of what I was thinking that this would would do, um, would would serve our purpose. Do you think that'll work, Krista, if we had if we created a separate page with 12 different images? I think so. The one thing I did just notice because I just looked up this artwork and what we at least have in our database. It's not a great photo. Um, <laughs> it's at kind of a weird angle. Um, so that would be something. Uh, if I could like get that list and just be able to see what quality photos we actually have, I think there would be, we would need some to probably be reshot. Um, mm -hmm. Just because, yeah, the one I have basically just looks like kind of a bad cell phone. <laughs> in it. So I don't know if we'd actually want people to see that. <laughs> Yeah. Did they reshoot it, Krista, to get this image, though, for the wrap? Maybe they could give you their photos. That right? I don't know. That actually makes me think that's maybe why they did a detail shot. Um, but I don't know. They might they might have high-quality images of, of them. You would hope so if they're doing these high-quality reproductions. So that might be the first start is just ask okay. them for all the images. Because um, also, I think just knowing which images they actually selected, I don't have the full list. I don't know, Keith, if you have the full list at this point. Well, I have a preliminary list. A whole bunch was already list um, in the conference center, the Salem Convention Center. So they have to actually take it down to photograph. Um, okay. So they should have some nice photos. So I'll talk with okay. prisoners and see if they can get their hands on it. Yeah, but yeah, if we have high quality photos, I think that should be totally fine. And I don't, I don't anticipate this being too much of a time consuming task. Okay. Yeah. But I think if there is one link that they can get to that they can see all of them, that would be really wonderful. Question. Since we were talking about uh, the Eco Earth and the other mosaic, is there is there a link on the website that can direct people to donate? Is that legally allowed? Um, well, the thing is donations are raised through foundations. So the part yes. Yeah. Foundation, the I think the Salem Mo Mosaic is a nonprofit. We could probably put links on there, but I I would have to talk with our legal department. Yeah. I have never seen 
donation links. Yeah, it seems like it might be a little cloudy. <laughs> yeah, no, but if you don't ask. Yeah, I mean, it might be a great, could... go for it. Oh, well, what I could foresee doing that is like when we do post it from us as the city to then get these different foundations to repost it and add a link to it and say, you yeah. know, follow this link if you want to make the donation. Mm -hmm. um, that and making sure that we're tagging the foundations so that people have that access, that could be hopefully a way that they could access it potentially. Yeah, that'd be great. And um, Lynn mentioned a Peace Plaza Foundation. Is there, is, did I hear that right? Yes, there's a Peace Plaza Foundation. Um, and, and I don't even know who's on it, but I know the city is able to reach out to them because um, when uh, Lynn Dakota and I were talking about the possibility of the Peace Mosaic in Peace Plaza, um, and then I spoke with city staff, you know, they're going, oh, well, you know, we need to talk to the foundation as well. And I'm going, okay, yeah, we need to make sure they're on board. And I'm not sure if their site is just the foundation. I My guess is it wouldn't include the the wall, the cement wall before the library. Um, that's probably going to just simply be the library foundation making that choice. But it does mean, um, and I'll speak to it later, if we, if I ask for opportunities for art in Peace Plaza, we would definitely need to bring them in and also on the design that the developer would be working. They have to have a, a piece in it as well. So, yeah, always, there's always another group that has to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, do we, what do we need, Keith? I guess what I heard was this first box is going to be a test wrap, so we have a little bit of time before all of them are wrapped. Yes. Maybe, maybe we use that time to explore adding this additional page, getting kind yes. of pictures, and then the concept is that we're driving people to both to public art, say on public art generally, which is a variety of topics, and they can view all of the different uh, wrapped boxes. In and I don't know if it, maybe it can be done in a way that that kind of map based, you know, I don't know if it's should it be thumbnail based, image based, map based, that kind of, there's yeah. some attraction to like walking around and seeing them all and knowing where they are, and, you know, yeah. I don't know. So, oh, okay, what do I do? Make a final, uh, a formal motion that we recommend this or anything, or? Is um, it I don't think that a motion is necessary. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow up with um, Dessa Publishing, who's working with the uh, the contractor uh, for the wraps, see if we can get hands on files um, that we can create our own page, which shouldn't take too long, uh, and then create a link. Um, to that page on our existing landing site. And that will give us um, right. a way to communicate that. Could be a link on that page to the full public art. Exactly. Yep. And I'll work with Krista um, um, as a consult. Yeah, oh. happy to. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Okay, great. Um, Next is the library art kiosk update with uh, David Muller. Yes, David, you got the floor. All right. So um, I'll, I'll just start with a basic background. Uh, I am not a uh, big art guy. Your shirt is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, working at the library, I mean, I'm IT, but I work at the library uh, uh, fully. Um, and so working there, uh, seeing all the different art coming in and out, uh, some of us at the library who don't typically look at art at all, uh, started talking about it. When we get into art, we go and check it out. And then pretty soon we're like, well, do you remember that one back in the day that looked similar to this? And we could never figure out who the artist was. We couldn't get back to it. So then, um, the foundation asked for, um, sprinkles grants. And so what I, off, what I offered to her was to put in a kiosk uh, that would show off all of the city art um, 
basically it'll just go to a single landing page or a single site that they can browse through, look by uh, artist and look at the different art that they've done. And that's both current and past. And it can also include all of the stuff that we have around the city, show locations. And to me, the best part was that if I'm in a wheelchair and I can't get to all these different places, I can go to the library and I can bring it up on the screen and still see it, still enjoy it. And uh, that kind of meant a lot to me, uh, but I'm not necessarily a big art guy. I'm becoming one, I guess. Um, and so uh, we went down and we picked up the, uh, or the foundation of purchase, the kiosk, which um, we are currently working on it. The, the IT department, um, our programmers uh, have some important projects that they're currently on. So this one kind of got pushed down the line, but uh, right now we believe that it, the website should be completed by August, beginning of August. Um, and then it'll be on the kiosk and up on the floor um, for people to start to enjoy. And of course, Keith and I will do some testing, make sure it's all good to go. Um, and then Keith will do all the updates. So when we get new art and when that changes out, and if the if the artist decides, yes, you guys can go ahead and put it out there, then he will get it all put up on that kiosk. Yeah, um, there's one, um, well, you kind of putting up in front of the show screen. Um, Chris Darcy did bring up a point um, that the artists at the OSAF, they do tend to sell their um, artwork after it's displayed up at the library. And that might be an issue if this actually shared with it. No, oh. we'd have to go to the Zoom. Uh, and if, for instance, if they were displayed and the artist did give their consent to display it during the exhibition, but then it's sold later on, um, do we are we still able to have that um, posted on you know in our database? And so that's kind of uh, something that we need to tease out um, before we actually implement. Um, something that has, you know, current artists that sell stuff. Did so you explain a, that more, Keith? I don't. I'm not sure I understand that problem. Okay, uh, Chris said that um, even though the city does not sell or put prices on the artwork in the library and art hall because it's just for, you know, for the public to see, that piece of art might be bought after that exhibit is over. And leave is what you're saying. It might not be there anymore. No, no, it leaves the collection because all these art in the art hall is temporary. They, right. they leave. Right, it's not part uh, of the collection. So why would it be? Can so we, we'll just keep it in the system. As... We, yeah, sorry. Can we back up a step? Yeah. So, so what art exactly is being shown at the kiosk? Well, we don't have that now, but we're proposing to show the existing collection. In its entirety. Okay. In addition to another section, we'll have the library art hall. So this library art hall is a quarterly um, exhibit exhibit that OSAF, Organized Artists Foundation, artists or uh, yeah, um, work with um, the library to put on. Um, they don't sell anything in that, and it's connected to the Sable Convention Center um, second level gallery. So those two are connected. Um, they're worried that while we are displaying this, you know, the library art hall in the beginning, we're all fine. It's in the it's in the system. But later on, when that piece of art that's on the wall gets sold, do we yeah. still want to put that private piece in that public art collection? No. So someone's gonna. I mean, that's sorry. That's my opinion. <laughs> I, I agree. It sounded, it sounded like an edict, but. No, I mean someone's got to manage the database, right? So like, if it's the if it's the city collection or the temporary art hall, like if the collection, if for some reason we deaccession something out of the collection, then it would need to come out. And if the temporary art, art hall exhibit comes down, then it would not be there anymore, or pieces got sold out of it, or in whatever way that it left, because because uh, an artist, an OASF exhibition of art for sale isn't part of the city's collection. So once that. No. But they do have to sign a legal agreement. Um, it's called Art on Loan Agreement. Um, yeah. that they signed for that of uh, three months that they're in there. Yeah, which makes sense. And I think it's a cool idea to be able to see that work um, on the, the um, what are we calling this, right? The kiosk. Yeah. Yeah. The kiosk. Uh, but as soon as it leaves, I would think it would come 
come down, come out of the database so that you wouldn't see that anymore. Doesn't that, that seems like it makes sense. Is there, is there a person who's going to have access to this, who's kind of tending the, the data behind the, David? <laughs> I'm looking at you. No, we were, uh, yeah. We, oh, it was just be between us. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is new. Um, we are just trying something out. Um, and so we're kind of working through things. Yeah. Uh, We'll definitely uh, look at whatever the, however it has to be managed, we will definitely attack that and you yeah. know, figure that out and get it done. But it could be simply writing it into the contract that the artist signed up front saying, we'll keep your art on this kiosk for a year. Or I, I'm not sure how artists <laughs> do their work. How There's, long? How long is the, the, I think I thought I heard you say the temporary art hall exhibits were three months. Correct. But we wanted to keep their artwork. You basically wanted to have an archive of all previous exhibitions. There you go. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. In that yeah. case, if it can be organized that way. Yeah. Then... If it can be organized and maintained, I think it's a great idea. But okay. yes, if anything were to be sold, you theoretically would then have to get permission from the new owner to be able to show that in any sort of form. Would. So okay. It would be... Um, some maintenance that would be involved absolutely or is there just a way to say these are this is an exhibit as a full exhibit that was here mm. so I think you're that's, not saying yeah. it's this artwork this artwork so if you say this this exhibit took place you know during this period of time in the art wall it was sponsored by osf i don't think it would be any problem to keep that to not keep that yeah, so, so, uh -huh. Run it by the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always the lawyers. <laughs> yeah, so if you have a turn. I think Mr. Weinstein could probably answer that question. And it may be something that has to be written in the contract. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and I would also say that the person purchasing it would, um, you know, again, as Krista was saying, that if the not if we need to somehow have the purchaser also know that there's a historic representation of what was shown and that the piece they purchased would be there. I think that there's just going to need to be some legal mm -hmm. ways to make sure that everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. But our current collection, and this was the original intent, was so that people coming to the library can see everything um, on a big screen that they can yeah. interact with it. So. Mm -hmm. And does that include where it's located if it's on public display so that they go see it? Yeah, there'll be some. The idea is that there's also some information attached to each picture uh, that they can look at and it'll tell them where it's at and, you know, what the artist's name is, that sort of thing. Yeah. My, my recommendation on the temporary uh -huh. stuff, you know, exhibit catalogs happen all the time and that's a super common thing. So I don't think, I don't think you're going to run into any legal issues with the image being in an exhibit catalog prior to sale. So. That's probably not a not a major concern, but um, I do think that if I think that showing the current exhibit in the temporary art hall as a current exhibit makes sense, so that people are like, "Oh, there's an exhibit up, and here's the how many pieces in it," and then being able to see past exhibits like an exhibit catalog, mm -hmm. and then people can click through them, which means you would probably need to update this thing every time that yeah. Paul rotated out. Yeah. And then bracket it off as a past exhibit and then take new images. Is that going to run into the same image problem, you know, that Krista was just talking about? Like, are we linking to the entire, the, the entire exhibit? The, sorry, the entire city collection? Switch, switching away from the temporary art hall for a minute back to the city collection. Are the photos we have good enough to exhibit on this? Kiosk? Not a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah. So there might be a photo project embedded yeah. in here. I think that definitely would be probably necessary. Um, because yes, as as I've been going through them for the social media posts, there are some that I'd love to use, but currently we just don't have great images. Trevor takes them on his phone or on his camera, very grateful day of kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think if we really want to have an accessible archive in a space like this, um, acquiring some more professional photography would be very useful. 
And Zach, you're right. And Susan too. If basically, if we just say that these images are used for exhibition purposes and can re reproduce for exhibition purposes, um, we should get out of kind of those legalities with using those images moving forward. We couldn't take new images of them, but we could use previous images that have been used. Okay. The photo idea, I think it shouldn't be too difficult if we can, you know, does the city have a, they have a city photographer? I mean, it could be just a at least the, the work that's at the library would be pretty easy to shoot. Um, and there's a lot there. There's a lot of pieces. The city, Public Works has a desktop publishing um, group. Um, I'm not sure how we, I would have to talk with um, what's his, um, Scott Archer. Um, he's my director there for is, the art commissioner. There, there's a couple of photographers that come in, but I don't know if they're contracted or if they work with the So Yeah. Alternatively, um, I have a contact at Willamette University, and we're talking about internships and service. Mm -hmm. um, service, And, you know, one of them I talked about, Krista, and her experience um, with the Howie Ford and interning as a student. So perhaps maybe this is something we, we could create. Um, a position. Yeah. If you if you get to a point where you need a consult, um, Keith, I could put you in touch with uh, the X Gallery folks. Not uh, obviously, oh. I'll recuse myself from any kind of contact decisions. But um, we do this all the time, and oh. uh, uh, we take pictures. We have a massive intake photo intake process that we're doing constantly, and we've figured out how to do it in a not very expensive way. Um, so you can get a pretty good picture with pretty standard iPhone oh. technique these days. Um, oh. You just you just gotta pay attention to light and angle and use some basic editing tools that are for for the most part embedded within the the tool. Um, so just if you get to the point of talking about bringing in a contract photographer, there might be there might be some cost effective things to think about. So absolutely, I think it, uh, it's in a discussion at the, on our agenda today. Um, the, oh, okay. Well, excited. Just one thing back to the um, OISF, the art hall, where this um, kiosk is in the photo here. And I, I was there yesterday, actually, and I, it, I, I was thinking about the kiosk and where it might go. And there is that wall that's not used by OISF for hanging the work. And, you know, as long as it would not interfere with the work, I think if it would be in that spot, that would makes sense and also just keep in mind that the work is going to be up on the wall you know the the current exhibit so they will be seeing that work in person right there next to the kiosk so i guess it's important for though for that for oasf to have people see the work that's also at the convention center that correlates with the work in the hall so um, they may want to think about that too how they want to deal with that not to flog this horse unnecessarily, but is there an opportunity to put a, some sort of signage or something on the wall above that, um, the technology to sort of say, explore sale public art or something so that your eye can draw into that kiosk in case it has a go to sleep function or, or whatever, you know, just so you can see it from across the room that you might. Yeah, yeah. I, can t I can talk with um, Kate with the foundation and see if that's something she wants to do. Okay. Uh, we can always, I'm sure there's something we can do at the library too. You can put up vinyl letters. This is true. We can yeah. do like, just something that's like, oh, I should. Yeah, vinyl letters, and then you, if you need to take them down and move the kiosk, you can do it. It doesn't have to be, you know, yeah, it's something to kind of pull your attention over to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to, and to give you permission to touch it and, you know, whatever. Well, David, just some photos of the rest of the... Yeah, so basically what I did was, uh, because it's so far out, I just took it up there and put it up on the floor. Obviously, you can see with the plug behind it, it's not really plugged in and functioning right there, but just so you get an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, so I, this was right here, right at the end of the um, bookstore windows, um, right up against the wall, essentially. Um, and it's a 50 inch screen, so it's it's pretty large in size and it is a 10 finger touch screen. So they can zoom in, zoom out, swipe for the next picture, that sort of thing. Um, and when it's up and going, it's just going to be a website. So they can just swipe around and touch the screen. Um, 
No need for a mouse or anything like that. I didn't get all of them. Oh, just um, go and hit the, hit the arrow. Go to the right arrow. Oh, there you go. No works too. Can you guys see that? Nope, I'm still seeing the same image, the first image. Hold on just a second here. Oh. And I'll just share the other one. Yeah, I'll, I'll share it again here. Mm -hmm. Teams is a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is but then when I try to do Teams, I can figure it out. And the direction. There's the wrapped up part. So this is, you can see there's already some art on the wall behind it. Yeah. It's literally in the middle of the hall. So when they come down to see this, they're literally walking through the current art that's there to see what's there. So it's contextualized a little bit. Yeah. I yeah. And this kind of gives you the idea of where it sits in that hallway. Um, there are lights. I didn't move any lights around to put something on it. Yeah. Uh, but well, this gives you a good idea of what the whole hall looks like. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Great. Well, maybe yeah, explore whether or not it's of interest to your group to put some signage. Sort of. Well, we could do one of those signs that literally hangs from the ceiling too. So when you're standing at the end, you see a big art kiosk sign. There you go. Yeah. It's not permanent. We can just pull it down and move it. Right. You might want to also talk to the um, OSF folks about how they feel about having it right there, especially if there is going to be signage above it. Um, I know they, they take a lot of care and hanging that work and spacing everything yeah. out. I think I might have been thinking about the wall on the other side of the windows. Away from it? Yeah. I thought about that, um, and I talked with Kate, and the reason that we kind of went to this side is because uh, the right side or the other side of that wall is literally from the pole on this end all the way to the vent is usually art hanging on that wall. Like they'll take up that entire space. But they, they're not, yeah, that's what I realized that they didn't hang it there on the other side. They hang it here? Is that, I'm thinking, would that be better here? At the end of the hall? At the end. Side to that was I didn't have when we did the remodel. Um, I planned for some electronics, and I literally guessed what we would do. Uh, there was never a natural plan for putting a kiosk there, but I just knew that there would be eventually there was going to be uh, an electronic art display of some sort. So I put data on the left wall and the right wall, but you can literally see the two that I put in there. That was all I can get worked in for that whole project. So I did not get any doubt again. If we do that, which is not impossible, I just don't have the, it would just cost us to do that. So it wouldn't be possible to wire it so that it goes down further? No, we have to add wires down to that end. Just, we put jacks in it just like right there because there's both power and data that would have to go in there. And there's currently none. So I would have to have it wired to there. Yeah. Yeah, I think they might not be too happy about this positioning right here that's just my um because if, especially if you'll, you're going to have some signage um, but it's not related directly to the exhibition i know they have you know signage on the other side toward the beginning of the hallway over there that you know pretty far away from where the artists um um Yeah, I, I, I spoke with Kate and, and the current artist, and they like it there, but uh, you're right, it could be the next artist may not like it there. I don't know. I was talking about the sign, the signage. You know, if we, there should be some signage, or maybe there wouldn't be sign. If there isn't signage, it's not as, you know, intrusive, but with signage above it, I think it would interfere with the, at least they'd have to hang things differently. Sure. Well, I will talk with Kate and find out what her, her idea is. She deals with all of them, so uh, I would have to defer to her uh, judgment on that one. And then Kate, of course. Well, it's an exciting project. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks for updating us. So sounds like you got a few things to explore, photography and signage and placement and stuff, but uh, super exciting. Yeah, great. Yeah, thank thanks, you very much. Thanks for the idea. It's a really 
it's it's uh I think it's people are really gonna appreciate it. Um let's dive into subcommittee report. Um Art collection maintenance. I think we have a couple of reports back from Lee on the drummer and rooster and the black discs. Yes, I forwarded that to the commission. He sent me an update this morning. I wasn't able to go through it completely, um, but it sounded like in his email that it was gonna, it would be ready for installation in April. Yeah, that's what I I read it too. That's that is right. Um, he, I can kind of summarize it briefly. I think he sandblasted the pieces down the metal. He's getting them restored, repaired, and he'll be done at the end of April for the drummer and rooster. And then he gave us a, a bid of, I think, $6,000 to uh, remove the black discs and do something somewhat similar, like sandblast them back down, fill them, and then repaint them. Um, I'm summarizing rapidly there. But uh, if I remember correctly, that, that bid compares pretty favorably with um, what we got before, which was, I think, a bid of Ten thousand dollars just to give us a bid, so um, yes, think, it was. <laughs> this is actually the bid to do the work. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we take action on today or um, want to keep talking about or exploring. Do you have thoughts on that, Keith? I do have a thought on it. I would preferably wait until the first job is completed. Um, okay. to see how we like, you know, the work and, and all of that. Uh, then I would talk with my procurement officer to ensure that because it's over 5,000, that we are going through the proper um, contract rules and to engage, you know, bidders. Um, and then perhaps get us another bid for the actual work to be done. Um, right. That's what I would do. Okay. I think that sounds reasonable. Sounds um, good. So just saying that back to you. So we're going to wait and see, make sure we're happy with the work on the first piece and then make sure we're following the right process to Correct. explore how to, how to, who, who slash how to best do the work on the second piece. Yes. And I can start that work now on the research on how to go about contracting or, you know, seeking contracts while um, Lee finishes this part. I can, I can speak from experience that that disc piece is very popular in my household because it's uh, next to that pond that's full of uh, tadpoles. Uh, and my <laughs> children uh, like to capture them and sit and climb on that thing. So, um, yeah. That's where the damage is from. <laughs> Proper pro pro action from public art is being shown from the, uh, the next generation of holes. Um, and I appreciated that he... Um, included that historic photo from, I don't know, was it Statesman Journal or something about when it was installed? I mean, he really did his homework on that. It's good. Yeah. Something maybe should have in our kind of archives um, related to the piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so about 6,600, I think, was for this one. Uh, SPAC currently has a budget of about 45,000. Um, and so this would be coming out of the maintenance of that. Yep. Okay. So I think we have a path forward there. And uh, I just wanted to, I don't have the photos, but if you all remember um, two summers ago, the uh, Guidance of Youth is a statue that is in Bush Pastures Park. Um, the Salem Parks Foundation or Salem Parks Operations paid about $10,000 to um, conduct restoration and repair on that, um, and that uh, got uh, vandalized again um, this past time. So um, hopefully that hopefully the uh, anti graffiti coating that we paid for and got applied to it is going to work. Um, and I emailed the parks department to see what kind of um, uh, repairs they've done so far, um, but they haven't sent me an update yet. So. I'll have updates at the next meeting. So we that's don't think that's been cleaned off yet or not? No, not yet. I haven't I haven't heard word. It they could have. Yeah, the sooner the better, especially with what's been going on with the yes. We only have one person on staff for graffiti abatement. I bet you could get some volunteers if they knew sure. what they were doing. 
Susan, I think that's a good idea. And I know, again, Lynn Takata did something, um, but I think that there's some regulations about that. So I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if public are to help. I'm not sure. I can find out. What about the um, the the graffiti, Brian, that's on the um, the bathroom there? Has that been cleaned off yet or painted over or anything? I think they take, take care of it like within a day or two, usually. So they're pretty good about it. And yeah, they only have one or two people. There's only one. Just one. Because there were two and one oh, higher. That's right. Yeah. So, and let's just hope we don't have to cut the one we have. I mean, I'm serious. This is how tough things are. All right. Well, thanks, Keith, for the update. Um, Krista, social media plan report is next up on the agenda. Yeah. So last month we finished up. Um, we did bird watching in February because it was National Bird Month. Um, so each week we did a different bird themed artwork through the public art collection. Um, engagement was a little bit lower, but also that was slightly intentional. Um, we had some pretty intense response to some of the posts in the previous month. And um, so the idea was to tone it, dial it back a little bit, um, just in hopes that there wouldn't be as much negative response towards the public art collection. Um, and I do believe that we succeeded in that. You can't get that mad about birds. Um, and then this month we are focusing on Women's History Month. So I am doing a different women artist um, for each week. So last week it was Betty LaDuke. Uh, this week it's Elizabeth Brinton. Um, and then I have two more planned for the rest of the month. So I think this month will be really lovely. Um, I'm realizing even though there are a lot of uh, women in the collection as a whole, a lot of it's actually based in the Library Foundation collection as opposed to the Salem Art Collection, uh, Public Art Collection. So that has been enlightening just um, as kind of something I didn't anticipate or realize. Um, so I think prioritizing, um, diversifying the collection a little bit more in the future and in future acquisitions will be really beneficial. Um, but yeah, that's, that is the plan for this current month. So do you think acquiring the library's art collection to help diversify the season? I absolutely do. Yeah. Um, I think, I, I think a lot of people kind of already assume that they are yeah. combined. Um, I think the fact that they both live in the same space, um, the fact that there is a lot of Salem public art collection in the library. Um, I think people do just assume that they are integrated already. So I do believe that acquiring that officially um, will only be beneficial. I mean, it's already in the archives. It's in the database already. The information is there. Um, that artwork actually has more data. It has more information than most of the rest of the artwork in the collection. So there has been research already conducted on those artworks. Um, so I think in terms of acquiring art, it, it would only be beneficial. Whereas I think where there's lacking research isn't actually the rest of the collection currently. Thank you for that. Can you and remind me, Keith, if you remember, I know that the library asked the city to take on that collection. Where does that stand? Um, with the limited resources um, in terms of how to manage it, um, I think a conversation will need to be had with um, Kate uh, to see where they are um, and what our appetite is in terms of taking something on to manage, essentially. Um, I know that there were um, discussions about uh, appra uh, appraisals of the artwork um, for, I guess, replacement value, things like that, um, that they that we could combine with both collections and do it one time. And especially with the, uh, the need for a database, um, you know, re redoing it to, to unify both of them would be just easy. Um, so I can reach out to Kate again with the foundation and see where they are in terms of um, handing that over and what kind of resources they would be offering to us. Um, the fact that the city's general fund um, is in dire straits right now. Um, and I'm pretty much the only resource uh, for art. Um, you know, we would have to look for more resources. 
Got it. Yeah. So, but I will reach out to Kate and have a update for you at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, review and approve draft strategic plan is next. Yeah. Um, um we could. Um, I didn't see much um interaction from the commissioners in the document. Um, so maybe we can postpone it, and I'll send out more reminders specific to what the ask really is. It's essentially, I would like you guys to open it up um, and put your comments in there um, mm -hmm. and kind of assign yourself um, where in the strategic plan you'd like to focus your effort. Um, whether so, it's... Yeah, I see then I saw that you kind of started doing that. Um, and, and I think that's a great idea for all of us to just kind of put our names in there as a general, if you're interested, um, and then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, I agree. I'm guilty of not. Yeah. Updating okay. my so. I'm in France right now, so sorry. Get <laughs> <laughs> it's 1 a.m. and I'm here. You <laughs> are here. Thank you. Really You're one like our most dedicated volunteer. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, it's 1:07 a.m. here right now. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. I love public art. <laughs> yeah. It shows. <laughs> Let's challenge ourselves to all, myself included, put our comments in there for. Your, and do this on the next meeting because I think we've punted it twice now. So um, we can move it up on our importance for next yeah. time. Okay. I don't know if I saw a place for comments, Keith. I just put my initials next to things that I thought that I. That's could perfect. That's a, yeah, I understood what you, you're interested in. Neighborhood Association. Neighborhood meetings. stuff, yeah. Right. Uh, moving on to new business. Um, thanks for your. Patience, Tori. <laughs> uh, regarding the West Salem Redevelopment Advisory Board commissioned art. Um, thanks for joining us. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So the Urban Renewal Agency is funding construction of Second Street in uh, West Salem. And similar to downtown, uh, we have, we'll have installed um, an art pedestal. So just trying to understand the process to commission an artist, um, selection. Um, there's a West Salem Redevelopment Advisory Board. So it's a advisory board to the Urban Renewal Agency or City Council. So it's similar to this group that I'm sure there's some members that'd like to be involved, community involvement. So I'm just trying to get understanding of process. Um, it'd be an Urban Renewal funded. Our installation, again, similar to downtown, uh, would be based on public works installation standards uh, for art in the right of way. And yeah, just trying to understand what happens next. Right. Is there a, I don't, since I've been involved, we haven't actually acquired anything to my knowledge. So I'm not, I assume there's an RFP process that we would go through. Um, yes. Um, so of the commissioners who were involved with the police station, uh, art acquisition. No one. How about this uh, operations building? Oh, go ahead, Spencer. I mean, uh, I wasn't involved in those, but I was around for them. Okay. The um, my understanding was that a couple of people from the State of Public Art Commission um, sat on the um, the planning board or whatever the project manager engineer did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, that was my recollection, too, um, is that they made a selection committee, and I think that the entirety of SPAC saw the the applicants, and then there they we discussed them at, at our meeting, and then we the two made the decisions with either the owner or you know whoever else would be on that selection committee. Yeah, Tori, do sorry, you framed. Who framed the selection committee? Who? So it'd be, I, I mean, in past projects, it was uh, usually two members of SPAC, and then it would be uh, the owner or who is involved in in that project. So probably you or um, who's going to be uh, actually installing this, um, and then maybe. Uh, are you what do you what is the project are you guys building it's so it's a 
uh, city project. So it's okay. city right away. Okay. So then this, the appropriate city members. Yeah. Okay. As far I, as, is this, is so this... the RFP goes out to an artist community or how does that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think in the past one, we, we selected, we had a selection process of artists that we went out to as well. So we, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Can I just ask Tori, um, Tori, is this the, the street and the curb project or is this a building? No, it'll be, so on Liberty Street, I don't know what the art piece is called, but there's the I can't um, say it's the one Right. Yeah, it's the McGill oh, yeah. McGillicrist right off of what is the state and liberty. Oh. So like, you know, it's out there on the street. Um well it's a the sidewalk. Yeah, that one is. Yep. Oh that oh that the one yeah. that's in front of the yeah, so the there's two, yeah. yeah. So there are two pedestals. One is outside of Ritter's, which is a big cube. Uh that's in a public right of way. And then there's another one, it looks red and it's changed by Mel Cats. So which one? The male cats. The yes, yes, the cat. So what my understanding is, um, what some of the redevelopment advisory board is going to do another piece like that, where the pedestal is going to be installed. Um, and Tori's looking for the process in which art is selected. Um, the, my only experience with the SPAC selecting art was with this building, where two people were um, um, on the committee that was created by the project manager, the engineer to create the building. Um, and the, also the people involved were the operations managers for Mark Bechtel, um, who had, you know, represented the employees of the building so that they could get the employees input on what kind of pieces were here. And so I would say any stakeholder, Tori, that um, is in the planning process, you would, you would secure. And then we would form a subcommittee. We'll call it the SPAC Selection Committee for West Salem Redevelopment. And then two people would um, serve on that committee. Um, but the actual selection process, RFP, would come from the project manager, not SPAC. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like um, I'll start moving toward an RFP. And we could probably form a subcommittee under WestRev. So what we could do is, like you said, bring in probably two members of the community, two members of WestRev and then SPAC. So I don't mm -hmm. know, good timing as far as uh, who you'd like to suggest from this group to participate in that. Um, and this is a three-dimensional piece. This is a sculptural piece. We're right, doing. yeah. And so it sounds like Spencer in the past, we both, did we both put out like post a, a public RFP and then also send it directly, like actually ask certain individual artists if they would submit proposals? Did we do both? Um, I think what happened is that, uh, now I can't remember. I think we sent out an RFP uh, on the website and then people applied to it, to that. And then we selected people to make proposals. Yes. Okay. All right. So Tori, why don't we do a little bit of research because I can reach back to Chris Darcy okay. and we can okay. go back through. I'm sure we have a, a written down. Yeah, a formal process that we just okay. need to dust off again. So we'll, we'll take that as our action item and figure it out and then communicate. Okay. With you. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, I think setting up this subcommittee is probably the right uh, okay. vehicle to, to run that RFP process when we figure out exactly what it is. Sounds so, good. Yeah. And Tori, I can so send you, just, oh, I can send you copies of the last. You. Yeah. You first. I was just going to say, I'll follow up with you, Keith. Okay. <laughs> so the same thing. Perfect. Yeah, because we have a couple RFPs that I can just send to you that um, engineering sent down for these, this building. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Are there, is there any interest from the commission right now? Or, Zach, do you want to do that? Oh. Oh, good girl. Yeah, Laura. Laura. Oh, Crystal. Laura. Yes. Can I you a volunteer? Yeah, I I would be happy to be part of that. Spencer, were you about to volunteer? Sure. <laughs> look, at, look at that. Wonderful. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Tori, what's your timeline on this project in West Salem? So the streets, uh, the phase where the art 
pedestal will be installed. The street is pretty much done. Uh, the last section of paving will be done ultimately when the whole street gets paved at the end of this next summer. Uh, so next time, I think when they do concrete work, the pedestal, like the foundation will be set. So everything will be set. And then it'll just be a matter of going through the our selection process to and is have this, it installed. Is it the same protocol as the, the existing pedestals that are like beneath the grade with lights and yeah yeah. yeah yeah has lighting has um yeah grates for drainage yeah okay cool same cool okay all right um, sounds good thank you yeah thanks Tori thank you I'm about to run out of juice I'm just kind of maneuvering that you boards here sorry you frozen up frozen um Next up is Councilor Nishioka's motion for temporary air. Also, thank you for being with us and for being patient. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was just wanting to make sure that you all um, knew that I made that motion and passed and that um, I'm really hoping to find ways that we can have temporary art um, in Salem so it doesn't have to have the cost to the city and spec for um, going into the collection. Uh, and, and part of my original plan with Peace Plaza was um, again, looking at getting a Bloomberg grant possibly, um, focusing, because uh, Keith, uh, Keith here was saying, well, we need to have a focus if we're gonna apply. And I was thinking it would be, um, Again, Peace Plaza, ways of finding peace with all the violence that's happening. So somehow working that idea in uh, and, um, you know, the examples that I'm thinking, and again, I'm not here to direct anything. It's like the idea of a, um, a light show that could, could happen that would be an installation and then after two years it could change. So, it, you know, those are just examples. But I just wanted you to know that I'm, really hoping that we can find um, ways to improve Peace Plaza and then ways to highlight it, whether it be permanent or temporary art and potentially apply for a Bloomberg grant because right now Bloomberg's doing these temporary art um, and giving out like a million dollars to do temporary art, whether it's three months or two years. The extension is two years. That's as long as you can do, so. So that's what just to re-educate myself. So this is sort of things that would not be part of the city's collection, but that could be, that are authorized to be conducted on city property, I, I guess, um, which could be anything from a pop-up, like, yep. like a TBA kind of thing, or a, or a more, a more semi-permanent, like your two-year example, like something that was bounded in some sort of time that didn't fall under the normal sort of Yes, and so what it means is you wouldn't have to get easements. You wouldn't have to do some of that work. And it, uh, from what I understand, it may fall under more of the sign code um, in the sense that making sure that um, it didn't... Distract drivers or... Yeah, exactly. It didn't distract drivers or offend anyone. You know, there's uh, all those things. But uh, they, when I think he's pulling up an example that I would think would be really cool in temporary art to have in parks would be these, uh, the trolls, the great big huge troll. That's another idea. And again, I'm just throwing out ideas, not trying to guide anybody because that my, my, I'm not trying to tell that to you. But I just felt that um, this temporary art, and I was so happy that our um, city attorney was willing to move forward with this because that's, do you the have legal, a, legal questions are always the battle. Yeah, no, that's great. Do you have a vision of how, so it sounds like there's kind of two paths. One would be the city applying for Bloomberg grant or other kind of funding to maybe pick, pick things or have a specific project we're looking for funding for. Is there also I, a vision of accepting like applications for people who wanted to come in and self-fund? Like someone wanted to, do one of these trolls, let's say. Yes, 
So, so as far as funding goes, the, that's why I'm trying to find places for grants. Um, and the only reason I'm picking Peace Plaza as my jumping off spot is because I know that there will be um, a percentage of money um, going there. It won't be very much, I think a couple hundred thousand. Um, and so I think most of the Bloomberg grants don't require matching funds. Um, and so I was hoping that maybe we could start with Peace Plaza because that's going to be over the next couple of years. As I understand it, you need to have your concept ready to go to apply for the, the Bloomberg grant. So we'd have to make all of the steps to get there, you know, like soliciting and um, for examples and then determining one and then applying for that Bloomberg grant. And I'm really trying to figure out, I don't know all of the steps and making sure the city's involved, city's okay with it, and that the designer that uh, and developer that gets selected to work on the project will be involved because those, those things have to happen. And I know that we'll probably be finding out soon who that developer designer team will be. And, um, uh, because they're going to try to start work soon. Peace Plaza will be used as the, um, what's it called, when all of the heavy trucks will be there doing the work at the building. And then as that finishes up, then they can do the work at Peace Plaza. So I'm thinking we're looking at about two years from now. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that answer your question, Zach, kind of? Yeah, I think so. I was just, I, I'm also, I don't know if, you know, our, there are arts organizations out there that want to have sort of city property available as temporary canvases, you know, whether that's three dimensional or two dimensional or kinetic or whatever, but, um, you know, that, that like promoting it as a option for, pe for people to apply for a, whatever the word is in this case, permits, probably not quite the right word, but permission or, being allowed to do a pop-up art exhibit that wasn't funded by the city, but that was approved by the city under this. I just, I wasn't sure if that was part of what was contemplated under this. Well, it is my understanding that you will, the SPAC will have to approve them. And, um, and you're right. It's like, I don't know where the money will come from. Um, but if these could be things is as potentially simple as a small mural in a park. So, yeah. So an artist could, or an arts organization could ask to do something and self-fund it and SPAC could approve it. Yes. So, so in cases where we weren't, didn't have funding, but someone wanted to do something, we could still say yes to that potentially. I'm going to say, think of it as the street art where yeah. the community gets together. And so I'm thinking that community parks, they might, um, have enough people of interest that could be either involved in the construction or participation uh, or funding. And if they love an art piece that someone wants to come and put in a certain park. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. That's super exciting. It is exciting. Let's see how, how we can develop that. Good and job. <laughs> temporary art, these trolls, I don't know how long they would stay, but I'm going to tell you that I doubt if we got one up, I don't think anybody's going to say, oh, timeline, we got to take it down now. <laughs> yeah. It just, just wouldn't go into the permanent collection. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. uh, Zach, Mark uh, Wein, um, Weinstein, our legal advisor, um, give me a call after the motion went through. Um, and he said, uh, legal cannot advise until they understand what is desired because there are other parts of code that must be considered, i.e. building structure, public safety. Once legal has an understanding of what is desired, they will be able to better advise <laughs> legally. So I didn't get that email. <laughs> so I'm glad that you shared yeah, that. No. And so what he was saying, and, I, and we brought up this, um, uh, troll, uh, park troll, and he said, this is great, but there are rules within parks. You know, there are building construction rules, there are signage rules, and so 
I think what um, Councilor Nishioka's motion did was essentially open up the door for all of us to kind of consider art, you know, and not necessarily stay within the realm of a mural, and that's all we have. So right. I think we can use um, the community examples of um, SPIF grant, you know, having the community, having the neighbors, having the park yep. um, supported. Um, I like the idea of the asphalt, the temporary asphalt grant, where um, you get four or sixty percent of the neighbors agreeing that this is okay. Um, I think that combined with um, an opportunity to have different types of temporary art will allow us to develop those programs a little better. Um, and it sounds like the city attorney still wants to review things on a project by project basis, though. Yeah. Unless we identify all we are talking about are fences in parks or only art within public parks. I, I see. So we could pre we could get kind of pre approval for certain sorts of applications. Yeah. And so what I want to do is use that Northgate um, fence mural as yeah. as a case study to see if we can push it through this community um, skip like support. Um, and get that pushed through SPAC as a form of public art that's not seven years mural. So, Linda, we need to run out and put a troll somewhere. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then ask for permission. We'll, we'll probably have to cover it with some sort of graffiti uh, uh, <laughs> resistant <laughs> material. Okay. Yeah, I get it. That's cool. Thanks, Keith. Yep. And I will continue working on that with Mark. And kind of get questions to help tease out the vision of, of what SPAC has in terms of temporary art. Yeah, I appreciate the flexibility. You know, I think it's it's going to be it's powerful to allow more types of art to be approved beyond you know what we've been doing. So that's great. Um, my goal, my goal was just to open up the door a little bit, a little yeah. bit more. Good job. More. Great job. I think you did it. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, Keith, I guess Susan uh, accidentally left the meeting. Can oh. you let her back in? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Got a text. <laughs> I'm going to go because I have another meeting. Thank you so I'm much. I'm exhausted and I'm going to go get something to eat. So yeah, <laughs> see you later. Are you thank you. Tonight? Yeah. See you there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> thank you, everybody. I really appreciate all yeah. the work you're doing. Thank you. Sorry, I ran out of juice and my computer wouldn't even recharge when I plugged it in. So that's it. Sorry, that was, I really wanted to hear Linda's report. I guess I'll have to listen to it. In the yeah. Recording, sorry. Next time I will remain plugged in the entire time. Yeah. Learned my lesson. Um, let's push through the end here so we can, so we, yep. we can speckle everyone's time. Tagging of murals at the park, Chimaco Parkade, tagging murals and artworks. Yes. Uh, so I just want to share real quick um, uh, information I got from staff about some tagging. Um, oh my goodness, where are you? Oh, I can't do that. So this is down by. This is the mirrors. Um, yeah, share it. Oh, share it, share it, share it. This is by, I want to say, Rudy's? Yeah, Rudy's. Take Rudy's, it. yeah. Bring it up. There you go. No, <laughs> you're IT. <laughs> um, they got some tagging done. Um, so city staff, uh, we have facilities and abatement crew, um, and they usually just paint over or wash it off, but this was a little more tricky since it's already painted. But they were able to do some successful job on it. And this is in the night. I mean, there's a little bit, but, you know, they did as much as they could, and that's what happens when you put the anti-graffiti coating on it. Um, do you have an after picture that you're trying to show? I've seen it before, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Or I see the tagged image. This is the... Hmm. 
No? Yeah. There you go. I mean, it's light, but it didn't damage. Um, but there's other murals that um, that are higher up that did not get that graffiti coating. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's a little lighter. You can't really tell unless you really look at it. Um, yeah. So they're just going to leave it for now. But this is what they could do. Um, unfortunately, the ones at the guidance of East Satch and Bush Park are still there. I, I think I, I sent an email. I haven't gotten the response back yet, but I'll let you guys know. I mean, there was some tagging around City Hall as well. Um, there they believe it's gang related, um, but um, we're just getting the Bateman team on it. Uh, I just want to keep you abreast of what's going on in, in that respect. Um, any questions about that? I'll pull you in later on about the other pieces. I'm going to get it from them. Yeah, if there's a way, I, just tracking back to the volunteer discussion earlier, you know, if there's a way to understand the protocol or the methodology for doing cleaning that volunteers could do, I don't know if there's a way to do that, but maybe we could understand, you know, okay. if there's a sort of, can we get, can we get training, you know, could a group of, could a volunteer lead get some training that would meet whatever the requirement was to allow some volunteers to help with the abatement of, I don't know, I'm just reaching. Okay. But, yeah, I know we have a Bateman, uh, a graffiti Bateman team, um, and I can talk with the supervisors, see what kind of resources they have, and um, any opportunities for volunteering. Just if person power is an issue, you know. Yep. That that coding does that need to be reapplied uh, after a while? I, I'm not sure. I can look it up. I'm sure it must. Because I wonder if we should just make sure number one that all of the accessible murals around art have been coded number one and that maybe they need to be coded again thank you i can check with the facilities to see if they have maintenance routine i'm um, set up for each of the murals because i know the parkades are the ones that they hit up yeah because there is a real problem of you know more tagging going on all over the place and every in in most a lot of neighborhoods almost every neighborhood um just one interesting thing with that was that the city put out a little graphic for social media about graffiti abatement and who you should contact and who you should call and it had an image of a tagged something and i posted it on our neighborhood site and i think it might have been even lynn from nan said don't post tags and i was like oh you're right we shouldn't because <laughs> we were kind of spread you know mm -hmm. spreading the so i kind of cut it out of the picture but i don't know if anyone was contacted at the city to say hey you know maybe you shouldn't show a tag so you didn't see that yeah okay um there was a louise buns um piece that fell at the library off of one of the hinges hanging but it didn't it just hit a shelf um they took it down um and i think kate took a look at it and determined there was no damage maybe a little minor kind of um, shifted but i told her if it looks good just you can hang it back up and i think that's what they did so just wanted to disclose to you all our collection um the last how one secured? How, how are the pieces secured i mean can anybody just kind of lift one off the wall and take it home kind of <laughs> pretty much there, there are some anti-theft hooks that we could explore okay might be a good idea it's just an, an, you know not only for the falling down but yeah i mean there's some wonderful valuable artwork there that we wouldn't want to lose and it's tucked in the corner behind the stacks. It's like, I'm even tempted sometimes. <laughs> no, take that out. Take that out. I didn't say that. Well, that out. The big core piece, the big wood core piece. Don't touch that. I saved that one. <laughs> That's what I would put up in my office. Um, and last, uh, I didn't, uh, Chris was supposed to be here, Darcy, but um, she emailed me and I think I forwarded to the commission the um, exhibit for the Laird Impressions painting by Nancy Eng at the Level 2 Gallery at the Convention Center. 
Um, so that's the current um, one at the uh, library art hall is the sister um, com complimentary exhibit. So that's going on right now. Yeah. Um, and they, the legal signed the paper signing all went through with OSAF. So we're all good to go. Um, the only thing that makes me think about in the context of the art kiosk is still still lingering in my mind is this idea that from the public standpoint of view, public art is what's visible publicly, not necessarily what's in the city of Salem's collection. And it feels like we're starting to head that direction by highlighting and, and talking about, you know, art for sale from, from artists uh, like OS, OSAF, OS, OASF shows. I wonder, you know, if we want to, um, this is just a placeholder for a bigger conversation, but there's, you know, artworks on, on state building grounds, um, some, some really quite compelling ones, um, that again, I'm not sure the average city of Salem resident is making a distinction between the city of Salem collection and artwork that they can see in the, at the treasury building foyer or whatever, right? And so there might be some opportunity if we're embarking on a kind of more general public art in Salem, art education in Salem um, mission, we could include some of this other artwork um, just to kind of you know, if the long-term goal is to encourage the residents of the city to get out and appreciate public art and support public art. So just putting that out there as a placeholder um, topic, which I'll probably return to. <laughs> but um, And I defer that to you all. Um, I think that's where your networking and connections with our artistic community would, you know, benefit. You yeah. know, where, is there anything currently in place that could serve as a as a, a forum for a conversation like that. Yeah. You know? yeah talking about the state state collection, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. Just sort of like if they have anything linking to it or referencing it, yeah. you know, like maybe they yeah. have a spot. <laughs> they, <laughs> they do have a website. I it's I don't know. I like ours better. <laughs> the, the map is I don't know if they had that on their website. I mean, obviously, I be the state all of the Oregon. construction and everything. I think they put a lot of their works and things like that kind of on hold, underground, not accessible in this time. But potentially with the reopening, that could be kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, no, there's a couple pieces, I think, in front of is it Treasury? It's whatever the building is across from Kitty Corner from the McDonald's in Northeast Salem. There's some some nice 3D work and Lee Eminent has a massive, you know, two-story installation and another building by the Creek, by Mill Creek there near the state library building. I think, uh, you know, there's a, there's quite a number of these like large, pretty mm -hmm. impressive sculptural works around. Some of them are hard to see. And mm -hmm. if you like from the street, so you wouldn't necessarily know they were there unless you had maybe been directed to them somehow. So I don't know, just yeah. like, we need a, I think there was a public art map at one time. I, I guess I think of it as a way of leveraging state resources to benefit city residents, is how yeah. I'm thinking of it. No. Like, there are these, the state is paying to put public art in the city. It's accessible, mm -hmm. visible. And if we're going to design city art walks and walk around and see public art, like, may as well include these resources that the state's paying for so that people like can. That. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm going to take a look at the city's art. Um, Program, see if they have a, uh, a commission or something to that effect. That yeah. is the program and get in contact with them and see what kind of, if our uh, goals can match up. Yeah, maybe there's an opportunity. I want to touch base with Chris Darcy. She, um, the person that was the contact for that was um, out of commission or something for a while. Okay. But Chris will know. Um, who to talk to about that because it was it was something that was on her uh, mind to do to to link us with them excellent cool all right um action items or comments i have a few things i just wanted to ask about one is about um i don't know if linda talked about new commissioners you know whether they what what's going on with the selection process. I know she's on that committee. Mm -hmm. Was did she say anything about that? She didn't mention anything. Um, but I know that 
Um, there were applications that came in. Um, Brian applied for, for it, but his application wasn't part of the ones that the Boards and Commissions Committee reviews every quarter, so it should be the next one. Um, there was one applicant um, for SPAC that um, may qualify, and so I forwarded that uh, their name on to the Boards and Commissions Selection Committee, and it's going to be up to them and the mayor to decide if, you know, that the person is selected. Um, but currently we have two vacancies. Um, I know the city is looking at all of their boards and commissions um, for equity. And, you know, we even, I, as liaison, got a, got a survey, internal survey, you know, asking how is it operating? How do you come up with agendas? How do you, you know, et cetera. So I think there is a concerted effort by the city to kind of um, update their boards and commissions. Uh, so there might be in that discussion um, additional positions within SPAC, but um, I would anticipate a code change for that to happen uh, because it is outlining code um, what SPAC is, what SPAC's purview and makeup is. So yeah, I think we all got a survey too. At least I did. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Yeah. I got yeah. A reminder and a reminder and a reminder and a reminder. <laughs> I did it. So <laughs> I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing, um, two other things quickly. One is we talked about the brochures last meeting. Oh, and yes. In um, the Grand Hotel on my way to the OASF opening, and they have a rack with all sorts of things about Salem, and it would be perfect, I think, to put those brochures in the hotels. Where is this? In the Grand Hotel, in the lobby oh. of the Grand Hotel, the, next to the convention center, but the Holman Hotel... You know, any other hotels that are around where people, you know, okay. walk around and look at the public art while they're visiting Salem. Okay. And, and Susan, then, I do have extra brochures for you. I know you mentioned you you needed more. But yeah, after, I, I will, after I have stack me 500, after that, we don't have any brochures whatsoever. So, so we need maybe up for the up for the next meeting we could put it on the agenda about okay. um, updating that brochure and getting more printed. Oh, sounds good. Great. And one other thing, and it was Brian who who brought up this idea, and it's just we don't have to talk about it now. But we had talked about public art for the airport, mm -hmm. and uh, we I know we talked about putting the one that's getting fixed in there. But he brought up the idea of, you know, there's that iconic carpet, right, mm -hmm. um, at PDX that maybe we talk about having an iconic carpet mm -hmm. that would be public art. I don't know whether it would be or, or, or whatever, carpet goes, art, art, whatever, whatever carpet goes in there, Krista, you need to take a picture of it and make it canonize it as a iconic <laughs> make sure you take a picture with your feet on in it too, yeah. you know? <laughs> can take this. that's funny that's a good idea absolutely and then we got to make socks afterwards so yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i did talk to the airport um um because they i ran a couple of their um advisory board meetings because the system the personnel wasn't there and they decided um there's a lot of people um, there's an airport commission as well, an advisory commission, um, and there's public works interest in reserving uh, wall space for advertisement. And so I did tell them that SPAC is interested in, you know, putting up um, artwork or works, of, you know, commission something. And they said that they will have to um, talk internally to decide what strategy they want to take. Um, to see how much wall space there is left because revenue is a big um, issue for the airport at this point in time. So, okay. just to put it out there. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> all right, well, if there are no other comments, uh, thanks again to all of our guests today. That was actually a pretty full agenda. Um, Thank you. And then just remind everyone of our um, strategic plan annotations to do for next meeting. And uh, all right, with that, meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Safe travels, Krista. Yeah, yeah safe travels. Thank sleep. you. <laughs> Bring me back a croissant. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe do that. <laughs> right. See you. you next month, everybody. Bye. Bye.
Thanks for coming, y'all.